Welcome to The Late Show. It is Wednesday, the 27th of March, 2024. Here I am. I'm, my name, I think you know, so I won't even say it. I'm sure it will come up on the screen. Uh, there's an important scripture which we'll base our talk this evening on. And when I say our talk, I mean your talk as well, because I'll read out your emails. And it's in Galatians uh, chapter 6 verse 9, might as well put it straight up on the screen. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And I'll, I'll tell you now why I have chosen that verse. Uh, a number of years ago I, I was at a conference in Poland and Peter Saunders, Dr. Peter Saunders was there, at that time, he was heading up the Christian Medical Fellowship, and it's a big uh, conference uh, with many great, you know, uh, Bible teachers and speakers. And one of the talks, I won't say by whom, but he's a famous Christian uh, philosopher and writer, written many books. He basically said, look, you know, this talk of a culture war is exaggerated. And I happened to bump into Peter Saunders a bit later in the day, and I said, Peter, so-and-so, he says, it's, it's a little bit exaggerated, this uh, culture war. Um, you know, are, are, we, are we in a culture war? I was, I was a little bit younger than I am today. And Peter said, well, he said, there are nearly 50,000 abortions conducted a year. If that isn't a war, I don't know what is. And that, that really, startled me and, and made me uh, sit up uh, and tonight I think it's important for us to remember that we are in a war and it's a war to save lives, uh, to save the life of the unborn. If you look at the statistics, and there are plenty of them, just for Britain alone, since the Abortion Act, uh, David Steele private members initiatives in 1967. Since abortion was legalized in 1967, there have been 9,331,978 abortions in the United Kingdom. Now, I'm sure if we put a clock, a running clock on the screen, it would show us how, how it's gone up, probably hour by hour by hour even during the course of this program. Now bear in mind the horrors of two world wars. We didn't lose, we lost probably around a million lives. So over nine times as many lives have perished in the womb as were lost in the Second World War. Um, we've had news this week uh, of the, that um, baby which uh, was abused by his parents, a, a little helpless baby that had been born, that was out of the womb. Big criminal case, a massive sentence, uh, horror, shock and horror around uh, the nation, at how a child can be neglected and, and frankly many children are neglected and, and die. Many babies uh, die through neglect and quite rightly there's an absolute um, storm of, of horror in, in the country. But do you know we're not allowed to talk about pretty much anything to do with what goes on in this industry of abortion but I want to um, show you s some statistics which we are allowed to talk about and, and then draw some comparisons to um, some horrific things that were going on uh, over just over 200 years ago. And again, we are allowed to talk about those. And I feel like putting up on the top left-hand corner, or is it the right-hand corner, Howard, um, please pray. Because uh, uh, for many years, uh, this channel wasn't allowed to talk about the financial needs. So, uh, Howard, but we were allowed to ask people to pray. So Howard, put up on the on the screen, please pray. And you know, also by the way, the scriptures said it's it's shameful to even mention what the disobedient do 
in secret. And I would put this also in that category. So there's a limit to how much you know, decent people can say about the details of, of what goes on in abortion. But I'll tell you what triggered this whole um, thought in my mind to do uh, it tonight. One was uh, Melanie Simmons, a newspaper, the Heart newspaper front page, which is the issue, the current issue, is talking about a little girl who was saved from an abortion and uh, her name is Ruby and just look how wonderful she is, that little girl um, who you could say represents the nine million plus uh, that have lost their lives and who never had the opportunity to grow up to be a 13 year old little girl like Ruby. It's a really important issue and when I say uh, for the title of this program, doing the right thing, the right thing is to keep challenging members of parliament, keep challenging fellow Christians. Uh, don't judge, challenge. Um, there but by the grace of God go I. We are all living um, by God's grace. Anything could have happened to us at, at birth in our childhood. It's by God's grace that I'm sitting here, that you're, I'm assuming there are some viewers watching, uh, that you're sitting in your homes watching this uh, program or the repeats. It's by God's grace, um, but we uh, shouldn't use God's grace as a license for us to just hide away, not speak the truth, speak the truth in love. This is one of the most serious issues facing our nation and the world. I've mentioned the stats for our nation. Let's have a look at the statistics around the world. By the way, it's no longer 50 million a year, it's 73 million a year. So just in the few years since I spoke to Peter Saunders, it's now 73 million a year. And look at the top of the list is India, in terms of the number of abortions per year, 16 million, 600,000. I'm fairly sure we're, uh, the UK is in a 300,000 uh, bracket per year. China, uh, 9 million. You can go further down and see Russia, a uh, half a million and the United States nearly one million. But also that middle column's important because it's showing that how many women per thousand are having an abortion each year. Um, uh, uh, Vietnam, as you saw on the previous chart and also here, is 64. They're, they top the list. But as you go down, you can see, look, India with its vast population of 48 uh, women per year have an abortion. And of course, they're the only one, the ones we know about. But these are the statistics that you can get from uh, uh, Guttmacher and the United Nations report. Uh, and, and here we can see the headlines of uh, uh, China, um, the total, total aborted. Can you even comprehend that 336 million have been uh, aborted? Uh, uh, thus far, and again, these are the ones we know, 100 million in India, 62 million in the United States. Uh, it'd be interesting to see the charts uh, following the overturn of Roe versus Wade that uh, happened uh, with the, the judgment of the US Supreme Court relatively recently. It'd be interesting to see if those numbers go down, but it's become a political issue, of course, and uh, on Revelation TV, we have given um, a fair discussion. If you remember many years ago, we had the abortion debates with one of the chief advocates for what they call the pro-choice uh, lobby, uh, Kate Smirthwaite, arguing the case that um, a woman had a right not to be a human incubator. And, um, and so if the woman has a right to choose not to be a human incubator, as she termed it, then of course the logic of that right um, can be extended to full term. And I remember uh, Hillary Clinton in one of uh, her presidential debates arguing for uh, the right to terminate uh, 
the pregnancy right up to full term. This is the issue that I want to discuss uh, tonight. And I, 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 I think, wow, since I spoke to uh, Peter Saunders, uh, nothing's been done in reality to halt the tide in our nation, in Britain. It's deteriorated. And of course, there are those who argue uh, that uh, there should be even increased uh, rights. I'm leaving aside the, the details, just looking at the statistics, and I hope that you will agree with me. I feel it's so important. And as I say, what happened just over 200 years ago, we are allowed to talk about. Um, we are allowed to show a, a short extract from a film that uh, I think we're all familiar with, but I want to zero in on the encounter between John Newton and William Wilberforce, and uh, to just consider the fact that you know John Newton uh, was party to the transportation and death of, as he said, twenty thousand. And this uh, Dr. Uh, Levantino, Levantino who, who spoke to the US Congress that prompted me to talk about this uh, today, uh, he, he had conducted 12,000 abortions, but now campaigns against the whole practice. But if we could, if we could just watch, it, just so you don't have to continually listen to me, uh, watch this short extract from the film Amazing Grace. And now what? The other reason I came. You told me that you live in the company of 20,000 ghosts, the ghosts of slaves. I was explaining to a child why a grown man cowers in a dark corner. I need you to tell me about them. I'm not strong enough to hear my own confession. I thought time might have changed you. It has. I'm older. Pitt has asked me to take them on. The slavers. I'm the last person you should come to for advice. I can't even say the name of any of my ships without being back on board them in my head. All I know is 20,000 slaves live with me in this little church. There's still blood on my hands. Will you help me, John? I can't help you. But do it, Wilbur. Do it. Take them on. Blow their dirty, filthy ships out of the water. The planters, sugar barons, Haldeman Sugarcane, the Lord Mayor of London, Liverpool, Boston, Bristol, New York, all their streets running with blood, dysentery, puke. You won't come away from those streets clean, Wilbur. You'll get filthy with it, you'll dream it, see it in broad daylight, but do it, for God's sake. That was such a powerful, powerful film. If you remember watching it, Amazing Grace, 2006, by Momentum Pictures. So we're, we're grateful that we were able to just show you that short extract and promote the film. Uh, it's a film that needs to be watched again and again uh, with Johan Grufford, if I pronounce his name correctly, and of course, Albert Finney. Now, I want to show you a little bit more because, as I say, we are allowed to talk about this and I'm going to talk about it. And uh, you can see uh, here a graphic of the slave ships, which uh, was used in the campaign for abolition because the public had to see what it are the facts of these uh, uh, ships. You know, up to 600 slaves uh, packed in like sardines into these uh, transatlantic slave ships and um, 
it's unimaginable to think that they weren't even allowed to move. They were packed in so tight they couldn't even turn on those ships and many perished. Uh, you, you heard Albert Finney playing John Newton who was a slave ship captain and many perished on the journey. Uh, but I also want to show you a famous uh, painting which you may be familiar with by uh, J.W. Turner. It's the slave ship picture and you have to look in detail. You see a ship in the distance, it's in stormy seas, but if you look closely you can see um, uh, slaves perishing who had been thrown overboard. Um, we have a, a copy of this uh, painting at Moggerhanger Park where there's an exhibition uh, that shows the whole story of anti-slavery, shows Equiano um, and, and many others, Clarkson and Wilberforce, uh, but most importantly it shows that these slaves were terribly, terribly, terribly treated. And by the way, this um, uh, painting is connected to the story of the Zong. And while we're looking at this amazing uh, uh, painting, I just want to read, if I may, just a little of what actually happened on the uh, Zong um, ship. This is a true story and it has to be said. Again, we're not allowed to talk about the details of abortion for political reasons, which I think is an absolute stain on our nation. The slave ship Zong departed the coast of Africa on the 6th of September 1781 with 470 slaves. Since this human chattel was such a valuable commodity at that time, many captains took on more slaves than their ships could accommodate in order to maximise profits. The Zong's captain, Luke Collingwood, overloaded his ship with slaves, slaves and by the 29th of November, many of them had begun to die from disease and malnutrition. The Zong then sailed in an area in the mid-Atlantic known as the doldrums because of periods of little or no wind. As the ship sat stranded, sickness caused the deaths of seven of the 17 crew members and over 50 slaves. Increasingly desperate, Collingwood decided to jettison some of the cargo in order to save the ship and provide the ship owners the opportunity to claim for the loss on their insurance. Over the next week, the remaining crew members threw 132 slaves who were sick and dying over the side. Another 10 slaves threw themselves overboard in what Collingwood later described as an act of defiance. 132 slaves thrown overboard in a society that legitimised slave trading, that had um, a provision that gave the ship owners more money for dead slaves uh, through insurance um, a lost overboard uh, than uh, it was worth uh, keeping them and transferring them to, to the States. I mean, it's an absolutely wicked, wicked, wicked wicked, 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 wicked story. Um, and by the way, it equates to the wickedness. In fact, the scale of the wickedness that's going on today it, it, around the world, 73 million lives. Can you even imagine the number? And people can give relative arguments one way or the other, but we're on the wrong side of history. Uh, the Western world, the whole world is on the wrong side of history on this issue. So that's why I've called this program Doing the Right Thing. And I'm going to read some of your uh, emails and messages. Please, uh, please keep writing in. This is the main topic of this evening. And I can read more, by the way, from uh, Melanie Simmons' uh, newspaper, Heart newspaper. I'll, but I'll read your uh, emails and texts first. Uh, Dear Tim, I was naive and fell pregnant at 17. My unborn babies paternal grandmother tried to talk me into an abortion. I did not feel this was right. My eldest son is now 32 years old. I'm so grateful every day uh, that I knew abortion was wrong. God bless everyone at Revelation TV. That's Amanda in North Somerset. Thank you so much, Amanda. 
Uh, hi, Tim. I heard Pastor Hagee the other day. He shared an amazing fact. 100% of pro-abortion people are born. Deep, Paul writes from Nottingham. Let me just see if I can find the next one. This is from Dave. You mentioned uh, Hillary Clinton being in favour of abortions. I would ask her one question, and that is, uh, why are you here? No doubt she would give me some sarcastic answer. My reply would be, you are here because your mother never aborted you. Thanks for writing that, David. Uh, this is now from Diane. When I was a student midwife in 1993, I always remember I was working in outpatients at the maternity hospital and the consult consultant who was called Miss Hunt suddenly cried out from a cubicle she was in with a young mother. I will not do it. This is not an abortion clinic. This lady had come to her and had a history of getting abortions every time she became pregnant. I was so shocked as it was the other side of midwifery I was having my eyes open to. I remember a little boy James being born three months uh, from uh, three months um, pregnant, uh, if you know what that means. Um, he survived. I could hold him in my hand. He was a fighter. She was a model and didn't want her baby to ruin her body and she tried to kill her baby for the sake of her job. I also remember an Indian woman having her seventh baby girl perfectly normal as I rejoiced. I was told by her mother who was by her side to be quiet as her husband uh, was disgusted um, for her, with her for not bearing her a son. What an awful situation to be in for that woman. The husband came in and saw and went straight out disgusted. Look on his face, shocking. This all happened about 40 years ago, but it's still going on. Thanks for writing that, Diane. Yeah, there's all sorts of pressures that are brought to, brought to bear. Uh, this is from uh, Dor Doreen. Thanks for bringing this subject to notice tonight. It's as it's been so laid heavily on my heart. I know they were trying to adjust the timing from 28 weeks to 22 weeks, as if this is a wonderful achievement. I, I totally agree. I think that the, the level of the debate in our pathetic parliament, one of the worst parliaments in the history of the mother of parliaments. By the way, what does mother mean in a parliament like this? Uh, um, it is an absolute disgrace on our nation. I think there's a good case to say it's the worst ever parliament. And of course, um, there are Christian MPs who uh, agree with uh, our position from the scriptures. It's not a political position, it's a position on the sanctity of life and the vulnerability of, of the baby in the womb. And I would hope and pray that even if it takes the 20 years that it took Wilberforce to sort out the a scourge of the transatlantic slave trade that eventually a Wilberforce will emerge with a command of the English language and debating skills to persist and persist and persist to stop um, this going on. Of course, um, Wilberforce was jeered and told to sit down and just stop, you know, causing trouble and look at all the money that was being made for the sugar trade and for the plantations and, um, and to knock it on the head. And he kept going for 20 years until, um, by the way, until wives of members of parliament and high society were shown the slave ships and the stench and the cruelty and the wickedness by people like Thomas Clarkson just shoved it up their nose so they could see how wicked that slave trade was. And somehow we need people, brave people, to stand in a, a similar way. I'll finish your email first, Doreen, before I go off on another one. Um, uh, this is uh, uh, from Doreen. In the Old Testament, they also sacrificed their babies to Moloch who God would punish severely. Today it's no different. It's the same evil spirit of Moloch. 
that is killing our babies. I cannot shout loud enough that the baby is a human being made in the image of God from conception. Please pray and let's keep on campaigning for abolition of this murderer. I think, I don't know what, quite, what you're saying. Murderer P-U-S Act. God bless you all. Um, Doreen, thank you very much for writing that in. And good evening, Tim. The sickening thing is what scientists are doing with the aborted uh, babies. Uh, by the way, I'll, I will finish your email, Deb, but science um, has a very, very bad record when it comes to the sanctity of life. We've had now um, nearly 200 years since Darwin, who, whose essential thesis or hypothesis um, is that human life does not have any innate value, that we are evolved from a blob, which then developed into a reptile and a fish and, um, and then mammals and, and, and then various branches come out of this uh, fictitious tree and ends with uh, uh, Homo sapiens. Well, uh, it's, it's an argument that diminishes the value of human life and uh, scientists stick to it. It's almost as though they're, they're, they're like gamblers at the table trying to uh, win uh, a discovery that proves conclusively that their uh, hypothesis is true, but at the moment they just have to stick to their argument that we're on a road to discovery and we'll just keep plowing the lion's share of funding uh, that goes into universities to try and argue our position and to try and shut down the kind of things we're talking about tonight. Um, it led to the horrors of uh, Hitler and Josef Mengele. It, it, it came, it, it does, uh, as, as Doreen wrote, it does come from a satanic source. If you disagree, by the way, uh, this is publicly broadcast and you're very welcome to write in uh, and uh, dispute uh, what I am saying. And as I've said, we, we went out especially and uh, paid for uh, one of the chief apologists for abortion, for what is called pro-choice to speak on, on the channel. And she had more than a lion's share of that debate, I can tell you, because I was chairing it. So uh, Deb, you just mentioned scientists and I went off on one. But the sickening thing is what scientists are doing with the aborted babies, their experiments that people are not aware of. It is horrendous. God will expose them and they shall be judged. Of course, of course, once you say that uh, life isn't uh, sacred from conception, you can do what they call stem cell research, you know, in the hope of discovering a cure for this. And by the way, it's not adult stem cell research, it's embryonic stem cell research which is a very uh, short uh, trip on the slippery slope uh, to actually uh, creating a factory for embryos with the intention of aborting them so that you can develop the miracle cure or the elixir of life. You know, we're into that uh, chapter of history and again, it is diminishing the value of human life. Uh, Les writes in Proverbs 6, verses 16 to 17, there are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. And then Psalm 22, verse 31, his righteous acts will be told to those not yet born. They will hear about everything he has done. Isn't that wonderful thought that, you know, those who are in the womb, um, God's righteous acts will be taught to them. There's quite a lot in the Bible about uh, the womb and uh, how precious it is, how precious it was for uh, Elizabeth, the cousin of Mary, when John the Baptist was filled with the Spirit. So it, you can be spiritually a sen sentient, you can be spiritually aware, and he leapt in his mother's womb. Uh, and then uh, we have Isaiah 44 verse, 20, verse 2, 
This is what the Lord says. He who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you. Thank you very much, Les, for those scriptures. And of course, the other very famous scripture is in Psalm 139. You saw, this is the psalmist writing, you saw my unformed body in my mother's womb. I'm going to um, see if I can find, I was reading the, the current issue of um, the Hart newspaper and some very good points were made here by, by Stephen Green. Um, Pro-life MPs have yet to wake up to uh, the weakness in the pro-abortion mindset. They assume the Diana Johnsons and Stella Creases, pro-abortion MPs, attempting to liberalize our abortion laws of this world, in other words, these uh, pro-abortion MPs of the world, are um, think morally. I mean, this is their argument all the time. There's never been more discussion in Parliament about what's right, what's moral, what's a British value, um, what is um, a good, uh, but it's not according to what the scripture says is, is good uh, for us or for the babies. Uh, uh, Stephen Green carries on. He says, the irreligious left are unable to acknowledge that what is in the womb is a baby because it would expose them to inconvenient thoughts and wrong think. However, constantly asking the question will discomfort the pro-death camp and allow them to make mistakes. Remember, when we do the little things, we can ask God to do the miraculous. Again, do the right thing, it's the title of this program. Um, when we do the little things, it doesn't take much to challenge. If there's, um, it, you may be familiar with a situation where someone's in a quandary where Doctors are putting pressure on a mother-to-be to say, no, I think the skin on the back of the neck's just slightly too thick and therefore, you know, there's a danger that this child may have Down syndrome and therefore you should terminate your pregnancy. There's pressure brought to bear and I know that because I've got a friend who had exactly that and, and even though the argument was so strong, she felt that she should go ahead and, um, with, with um, husband, to go ahead with the the pregnancy and that wonderful, wonderful little baby was born. A, a wonderful blessing to the world. I uh, can't remember his age now, but I can tell you they were wrong. They were wrong. Isn't that outrageous? People make such a, a, a and rightly, uh, an argument, a big argument against um, capital punishment, that someone can be wrongly convicted, they can be wrongly sentenced, you know, with the black hat, and we've got to stop this terrible injustice. Doctors can be wrong in their diagnosis, and um, scientists can be wrong in their hypothesis, but look at what can happen. Look what happened with Hitler. The scientists were wrong, and tens of millions of lives were, were lost. And then um, uh, Stephen uh, Green and others have been holding out this important verse from Psalm 139 um, and, uh, of course, getting into all sorts of, of problems for that. But it seems a little thing, doesn't it, to hold up a scripture. But then we have a situation where the Christian scriptures are being termed and designated as hate speech. So what do we do? You know, like uh, Peter and John who were told uh, by the religious rulers, you must not speak in that name, you know, and then they released them and they just carried on because they said, you know, who should we obey? You or God? And God's word is clear in terms of who we should obey. I'll carry on. Uh, Satinda says, absolutely shocking figures on the number of abortions globally. However, I take comfort in the fact that each one of them has gone straight to heaven. Good theological point there, uh, Satinda. I think there'll be many, many, many. If, if John the Baptist could leap in his mother's womb uh, and, and were he to have been aborted, even as a late term, I think it was three months, she was pregnant. Uh, does that mean that John the Baptist won't be in heaven because he, he went uh, 
He was aborted at, 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 in, in the womb? No. He, he had the Holy Spirit. Um, James uh, or Arnie writes, um, seeing uh, as evolution is a satanic lie, should we not call it evolution? I agree. I, I think it's, it's done a, a terrible, terrible damage to general morality, a, a general a goodness uh, across the whole of the modern world. Jennifer says, I too have a most precious 32-year-old daughter. I got pregnant while engaged and was in the process of arranging abortion, an abortion because of fear of my father. But thank God, my mother-in-law found out I was pregnant and just encouraged me to bring the wedding forward and keep the baby. That daughter is the most precious woman today who is loved by everyone. She has the most wonderful personality and I thank God for her. It would have been the biggest mistake and the most horrific thing had I gone ahead with that abortion because she is everything you'd want in a daughter. So precious. Love from Jennifer. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry um, when I think of how many have been pressured into abortions for political reasons or for economic reasons. It's tragic. Um, thank you. Lib Liberi uh, writes, um, talking of abortion, most antipsychotic medicines used in mental health stop from conceiving or kill the fetus and cause miscarriage. While God tells us to choose life, those medicines should not be given to people against their will. I didn't know that. Just going to have a quick sip of water. I'm getting quite upset even reading about this. Um, Deb says, I can't bear this evil. It makes me feel ill. As was the day in the days of Noah, so it will be at the time of the Son of, uh, of God or Son of Man. Jesus is coming to put an end to it all. Prayer warriors unite in such a time as this. We've just gone through um, the festival of Purim and that was a quote, Deb, from uh, the story of Esther. Uh, when Mordecai, her uncle, said, look, you've got to speak out because who knows, God has raised you up for such a time as this. And, I, you know, I feel I was praying about what should I talk about tonight? And I thought such a time as this, that we are here and I have this opportunity and hopefully it will trigger some of you to speak out. And who knows, there may be a future member of parliament listening to this or listening to you speaking out on your streets, uh, in your community. Someone is out there who God is raising up uh, with a powerful you know, ability to stand against this tide. And it's, I tell you, it's as economic and political as ever the slave trade was. Uh, Buki uh, writes, perhaps we should put some energy into providing alternatives for women who, who, women who have unplanned and unwanted pregnancies. Why do we not put our money where our mouths are and actually offer to adopt unwanted babies and improve and extend any such services? Very good, uh, Buki. I've got a very good friend who works at a on a university campus helping young girls who are in this predicament uh, uh, to save um, them from an abortion. Because by the way, the, 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 the mothers uh, suffer greatly uh, from this whole thing. Helen says, the film clip highlighted the real problem of the slave deaths was the greed of the traders and slave owners who sold and used slaves to make money. The sugar plantations, probably the best known of these, the slave deaths were the symptoms of a bigger malaise in society. I totally agree at that time. The same is true of abortion today. If we do not deal with the cause of the problem, trying to deal with the symptoms is just like trying to put a plaster on a broken leg. Some babies saved from abortion will be at risk of neglect, harm and potential death, like the tragic baby whose death you also mentioned. That baby was just one more in a whole list of babies who have died from neglect and abuse. Since the abortion law was passed in the UK, we have seen a massive deterioration in moral behaviour, rape, casual sex, domestic violence, drug and alcohol addiction are just some of the causes. We live in a selfish society 
If every baby was saved from today, there would not be enough adopters to take them on and many would undoubtedly need to live in children's homes because there would be many who, could, who really couldn't live with their parental uh, duty due to risk of, uh, from alcohol, drugs, domestic violence, sexual and physical abuse. I worked in child protection before I retired, so this is based on real experience of working with the babies who were abused and neglected, even wanted babies whose parents simply could not safely care for them. Please don't just fight the symptom, but also the causes. Our war is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and principalities of the air. Thank you, Helen, for reading that. I, I'm a bit tongue-tied trying to read fast, but it's um, very important every word that you've said. Hillary said, when a couple were crossing the Bermuda Triangle, they could hear groaning, thinking, thinking it was the crew. They discovered it was not. Just have a bit more water. They found out later, when researching the history, that the place they were crossing was the place where the traders threw the unwanted slaves overboard. After services of repentance in America and Britain, the loss of planes and boats that disappeared over this area apparently stopped. Thank you for that, Hillary. There's no doubt the Lord, the, the blood, as it were, cries out. If we remember that from, from the story of Cain and Abel, the blood of Abel, your brother, is crying out from the ground. If that's just one, just imagine the roar, the crying that's going on um, from all those lives that have been lost 73 million a year. I, I, that statistic needs to be put back up, by the way. The 300, I can't remember how many hundred million since, since abortion started in the modern age. And it's not just our, our Western world. So it's 9 million in the United Kingdom. Uh, I, th I think it was something like 300 plus million in China. Um, that's the number per year. But this one, yeah, 336 uh, million plus in China. So we are, you know, heading for maybe, you know, between half a billion and three quarters of a billion lives. Uh, it, this is an absolutely shocking statistic. Uh, this is from Joshua. Um, uh, how are you? I will never turn against Israel because it's the apple of God's eye and it is the birth of the Messiah and also Jesus Christ's earthly mother, Mary. Thanks, Joshua, for writing that. Um, um, Israel, by the way, also has a terrible record. It's not just Britain and America, it's every nation on earth. But shocking to think Vietnam is, is the highest uh, proportion, highest abortion rate. Glenda says, I heard a report that a state in America has ordered that frozen embryos should not be got rid of as they are classed as babies. You're absolutely right. But babies can be aborted. Such a truly mixed up world we live in. Yes, you know, it's, it's, it was sh absolute shock horror when the, these refrigeration units were um, malfunctioned. Shock horror. When you mentioned, Tim, uh, that the present, UK's present statistics on aborted lives were nine times more than all of British lives lost in the Second World War. By the way, First and Second World War, Brian. Um, it rang a bell for Brian, as nine stands for God's judgment of mankind, whose number is six, and judgment came with God's worldwide flood, with Methuselah, his death shall bring. The world's oldest living man died or was laid to rest when his grandson Noah, whose name means rest or comfort, and his family entered the ark, whose measurements were in the pattern of the life of Jesus Christ. They were saved, having been given seven days prior warning by God. Thank you for that. Paul and Ruth, abortion is in a sense another form of genocide. Born children are destroyed every day as well. Hitler's final solution is the destruction of innocence. Russian aggression on Ukraine is affecting children. Any form of destruction of innocent life is wrong. We pray for Israel at this time who are being bullied by the nations. God bless you from Paul and Ruth. I know someone who was told, this is an anonymous text, who was told by a doctor that they should abort their baby and they didn't. The baby was perfect. Uh, Teresa says, 
when Vice President Kamala Harris visited a Minnesota abortion clinic on the election trail, it felt as if on behalf of Biden to offer up blood sacrifice for the presidency. Biden is pushing the slaughter of the unborn. Dark times indeed. God bless you from uh, Teresa. And um, he's, he, he's been admonished by the um, Pope. He's been told off because he's supposed to be a Catholic and it's totally against Catholic teaching. Acts 17 verse 31 from Les. Inasmuch as he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man Christ Jesus whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance to all men in that uh, he hath raised him from the dead. Thank you for that. I was just, I was just thinking, we're, I've got a few more minutes uh, to read your emails, try and get them in, and then we will play a beautiful rendition of Amazing Grace. Watch the film by Momentum Pictures, Amazing Grace, but um, send in some more, some more of your texts because it's very powerful, especially your testimonies. Thank you so much for all that you've written in. It's very moving. Um, this is from David. Thank you, uh, Tim, for your clear and honest program tonight on the issue of abortion. You're speaking for those who can't speak for themselves. It's the silent majority, if, if, if it is a billion souls. And now, um, uh, uh, Jill writes, I'm so glad that my daughter, at the age of 16, got pregnant and took her exams in the maternity hospital, and she passed them. The gorgeous girl is now 32. Wow, that is amazing. I've just got, I've just got a message in um, here, so I'm going to just read it out also. If you could just excuse me, have a look. Um, okay, so we have a, a, a CBN uh, video report. I don't know how long it is, but if we have time, can we play this uh, report uh, on the Roe versus uh, Wade reversal, especially concerning your prayers. So I've been trying to challenge you to, to be more active and be more vocal, but also prayers are so important. So please watch this, please watch this video report. The reason abortion rights went back to the states following the reversal of Roe v. Wade could be directly tied to the efforts of one woman, Mississippi Attorney General Lynn Fitch. In her efforts to fight for life and women's rights, Go even deeper here in the Magnolia State. The power of the prayer for us kept us going. As the Attorney General prepared for one of her most important cases, Lynn Fitch believes God played a central role in overturning America's abortion law. And when we got ready for oral argument on December the 1st, Oh, you could just feel the synergy, the prayers there, and the excitement outside in the rally. We had thousands of people. People were praying. Fitch and her staff spearheaded Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, the case responsible for overturning the 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling that legalized abortion nationwide. At the time, Jackson Women's Health Organization was the state's last standing abortion clinic, often called the Pink House due to its iconic paint job. Certainly, we made the argument, and the justices agreed, that this was such an important issue that should always be returned to the people. So now for the people to make all the choices, the decisions, and they have the opportunity through their elected officials, through their governor. And if you don't like it, then you can certainly remove them from office. Yeah, you do get the sense that there is more freedom of speech in America. Of course, there are absolute, you know, pitch battles and street battles over the issue. I mean, we've had it in the UK where, you know, folks who, who are there at a student union events are, are being chased, you know, and shouted down and literally had to, had to run for their lives just for handing out literature. So uh, are we in a culture war? Absolutely. Uh, what do we do about it? Well, you, you need to know the Lord's uh, leading and I know what I'm doing about it tonight, and I'm very pleased that I've got a response from many, many of you. Eileen, uh, you've written, 50 years ago, I had an abortion and remember being so grateful that I didn't have to go through with another pregnancy. However, I wasn't a Christian at that time. 10 years later, when I became a Christian, I knew I had to repent to the Lord over what I had done. I know that I've been forgiven 
and am thankful, but had I been a Christian, I would not have made that decision. However, I don't think in this moral decline we are living through, abortion will ever be abolished. God will be judging us. He is already. Um, God bless uh, from Eileen. I just want to say, um, Eileen, thank you for writing that. And I also want to say to anyone who is affected by um, this discussion and maybe some younger younger girls or families who are really emotionally distressed from, uh, from this. I know that if you were to contact the Society for the Protection of the Unborn uh, and ask them for advice, uh, and there are other uh, Christian pregnancy support services out there, um, and when I say support, I don't, I don't mean uh, BPAS or some of those other so-called advice services. Um, uh, uh, please do Google and, and get, get the support. I'm, I'm getting a lot more of your texts in and I'll try and read them quickly before we uh, play this rendition. I'm not going to have time, but uh, from uh, Ian, I believe the buffer zones are the same today as the drums they use to bang a, a drum out the sounds of babies crying. I do believe Christians should block roads off to abortion centres. What do you think? We're not going to have time to discuss that. Diane says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image. These destroyed babies are all being made in God's image. I believe God will avenge these acts on behalf of all those lives of babies and slaves. These people who destroy life have no fear of God. I think my clock is running down. Um, I can't read the longer one from Mandy, but thank you. We're going to follow this up again. Um, and I can see from Cynthia, my mother was told not to have more children as her first was an invalid. If I'd been aborted, the world would be short of 38 Christians. Thank you so much, all of you, for writing in. And we're going to end with quite a special rendition of the singing of Amazing Grace. God bless you and do the right thing. Thank you. <laughs> 